Hi, this is Retrotation bringing you an awesome tutorial answering the question How do I stop my RK handles from spinning and flipping around? Well, it's quite simple, I assure you. Let me show you the way. You can see here in Maya this amazing ninja model I create for Clone Drone in the Danger Zone, which is quite an awesome game, mind you. But first things first, let's create an IK handle. Uh, and to do that, we want to go up to the rigging tab up here on the top left. And then the third button in will look like two joints with a rubber band between it. Pretty nifty. Uh, but we can't see our, our joints, so we need some x-ray vision to get in there. Uh, we're going to go to our viewport options up top here of the viewport, and we're going to go to the shading menu, and then click wireframe. Or you could press the number 4 on your keyboard, but this is a tutorial, so we're going to go the long way for educational purposes. Um, and so the first things first, you want to uh, double click. This is important, you guys. You want to double click on your IK handle tool here on the left to bring up your tool settings. See up here you select, you know, move, rotate, scale, double click on the, the IK handle tool. Okay. And we want to change the current solver from a single chain solver to a rotate plane solver. Very important. You're going to find out why. Okay. So, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll discover that in a little bit. So first things first, we want to, uh, we got, now that we got the tool activated, we're going to click the, the beginning of the, the joint chain at the hip and then click the end of the, uh, the handle, the IK handle that we want at the ball of the foot. Okay. And now we have our IK handle. All right, so it seems to be working pretty well. Uh, you want to do this in a straight line, by the way, the the joint chain here from the, the thigh to the foot. Otherwise, you're going to get some wonky results, which you can even create here with a straight line by uh, moving the foot backwards, up, and then to the left and right. Your knee is not going to really go where you're expecting it to, possibly. And you're going to want more control over that. And that's why you're here today, because you want a polar vector constraint, okay? And this polar vector constraint is going to allow you to control exactly where that knee cap is, okay? And uh, to do that, we first need to create some sort of controller node, okay? And a controller node, uh, our controller node is going to be a text spline. And so to create some text, we're going to go to the top left corner here to the create menu and then click on the box next to text because we want to go to the advanced options. And in the advanced options, we want uh, the text number one. That sounds pretty sufficient. But oh my gosh, that thing is tiny. Okay, we want to make that thing really big. And to do that, we want to go to the Windows menu up top here and then go to the Attribute Editor, okay? And the Attribute Editor should pop up on the right here. And uh, so we want to scale that thing up by going and uh, scaling it. Yeah, okay, that's bigger. That's nice. I can see that now. That's so nice on my eyes, okay? And uh, now I want to position this thing uh, by the joint that we we want at the kneecap okay uh so i'm gonna press a space bar to get out of that mode and let's uh hover the mouse over the front viewport and press a space bar again blam okay we're in now let's move that one uh that one that one text one text to rule them all in front of the knee joint okay let's press space bar again space bar blam Okay, and now let's move it forward in front of the knee joint. Now, uh, for the knee, uh, because the knee is facing forward, it bends forward. We're going to place the, the controller node in front of the joint. In the case of the elbow, you're probably going to want to place it behind, okay? Uh, and so now that we have that in place, we want to select the, uh, the IK handle here. Uh, well, let me first explain something important. Uh, the the controller node this works in like a controller slave relationship so 
When you want to create a relationship between two objects in Maya, you first want to select the controller and then you want to hold down shift and select the slave. In this case, that will be the IK handle. Okay, uh, and to continue forward though, to set up the, the polar vector constraint, we need to get into rigging mode. And to get into rigging mode, we need to go up to the uh, drop down menu in the top left corner. Uh, see where it says modeling? We want to go rigging mode. Okay. And then up top here, we're going to see whole new menu options. Freaking cool. Okay. Now we want to go to the constraint menu. And while we have those both of those things selected, and we selected the controller first, and then the IK handle second, we click pull vector, okay? Blam! Okay, everything is cool in place, and oh my gosh, that knee follows the number one. That that one rules that knee, okay? Uh, now, see, let's, let's duplicate that one, though. Oh, oh, wrong button. All right, so let's press control D to duplicate that one. Okay, so now we have two ones to rule two knees. Okay, uh, but you're, there's one different thing about this, right? So this this number one, I'm gonna now shift select the IK solver here, and then let's try constrain them. It's gonna kick out an error. Blam! The handle must be valid and use a rotate plane solver. Remember that thing we did by double clicking that menu option to bring up the tool settings and change the current solver. All right. Now, we already set up this IK link, so how do we go back and fix this? Well, let's select the IK handle here, and then go over to the attribute editor on the right. And under the IK solver attributes here, you're going to see IK solver, and you're going to see single chain solver. Well, let's change that into a rotate plane solver, and blam, you know what? This thing is going to work just as the other one. Wait, uh, uh, I didn't constrain it yet. All right, now let me constrain it. Oh, yeah, check that out. Oh, baby. Yeah, cool. All right, works. Fine. Beautiful. Amazing. All right. So uh, there's some other tricks you can do here to make this uh, system a little bit nicer to use. Uh, some people like to do this trick. So let me go over that real quick. This is just a quick and dirty trick. Okay, so we're going to go over to the uh, curves and surfaces submenu here and create a circle okay and we want to wrap this circle around the uh the joint the joint here the joint guys okay so now it's around the circle let's uh let's make that circle a bit bigger let's scale it up to enclose this number one here uh it can be smaller i suppose but okay so next steps next uh, so now that we have the the circle selected we now want to select the number one Okay, and now the circle is going to rule that number one because we're going to constrain it click the constraint menu up top and do a Geometry constraint. Okay, see how the number one flips and uh, Got close and snapped to the the circle, right? Okay, so let's go over select the circle and go over to the attribute editor uh, under display, let's turn off the visibility so we can't see it. And if we want to get back to that circle again, we go out to Windows and we're going to go into the Outliner, okay? And if we scroll down at the Outliner, you're going to see the NURB circle right there, okay? We don't really need to play with that anymore. But okay, so it, if I select the one now though, you're going to notice that it follows in a circle around the knee. Freaking cool, we'll never lose sight of that one again, okay? Uh, that invisible circle is going to rule that. Cool. All right. And uh, I believe that's all you need to really know today. Uh, I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And don't forget to like uh, if you like the video, to comment if you have any questions, to subscribe if you love me, and to share this with your art buddies because they might want to learn something too. Okay. I wish you all all a blessed, great day, and uh, peace out.